All right, today on my YouTube reaction series, I have my first ever guest, and I waited a long time to pick the perfect person. Aww. It's my dear friend, Rachel Willis Sorensen. She is one of the world's top amazing sopranos. Really, not just generationally, but I'd say of all time. She's fantastic. Oh, like, she's gonna all in him and haul, but it's true. You can catch her at only the best places, only the best top houses in the world, because she's one of the best singers in the world. So, thank Rachel, you. thank you for joining me today. She has no clue what we're doing. I kind of give it away in the introduction, but we are doing a reaction video yep. of I Sopranos. Oh no! And we're gonna listen to other <laughs> Sopranos, and you're going to react to them. Are and they historical or, or current? Historical. Okay, if they're dead, then I can yeah. be truthful. Okay, all right. And the reason I wanted to bring you on here is because I do a lot of reaction videos to men singing. I thought, what better person to have to come and react to women singing? Than someone and with no filter! There you right? go, and someone with no filter. has no filter, honestly. We're going to listen to some of the most iconic performances of the most famous sopranos that have ever been. Wait, but we didn't even talk about the fact that like my big old debut in opera was with you, Lucas. Covent Garden. Marriage of Figaro that we did in 2012 we was were good. We were so good, and we you were so you good were together. so lovely. I remember you coming and be like, "I'm glad I'm not the only American in here." And yeah. then also that there were some other people in the cast who were just like really big deal, and I don't know, playing strange psychological games with me. I was having a bit of a hard time, and you mm. saved the day. I remember you saying, "You pulling me aside and be like, don't let that get to you." I saw that. I saw her do that to you, and like, no. Mm. And anyway, you're so you're like my big brother. I always think of oh. you like my you protected me in this like dangerous environment. It was my very first thing. So anyway, for all my life, thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. I, I and anyway, also we were awesome. We were, we so were awesome. awesome. I this think it's going to be the pretty funnest obvious. game show I've yeah. ever been a part of. <laughs> all right, let's do it. Anna Mofo, I love her. I love her so. She's so beautiful. She's very slight. Like her shoulders. She's just I don't know, tall and light. Freak, so tasty. She is a freak. You want that don't you? <laughs> I mean, the musicality, right? Listen to that. Mezzo piano, mezzo piano, mezzo piano. Oh, she didn't push into it. That's beautiful. I like that she did that. Just a floaty, because it changes the... Yeah, and then she changed, she, she changed the music. Foldy, foldy, bum, 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 and then she gave it. So this is interesting. I think this is... Nose job? Sorry. Tell it. This poor woman... Listen to her. Did you see that thinning for the passaggio? Tell me. Yeah, I just have to say, she, that was masterful. Like, she went, ah, uh, like, through the passaggio and yes. got small. But I have to say about her particularly, this is so tragic, and it's, I mean, okay, so Eileen Farrell's autobiography, she said that in 1950 or something, when she auditioned for the Met for the first time, mm -hmm. they called her amateurish and fat. I mean, I, we talk about, like, how image uh, bullying of women and men in opera is sort of new. It's absolutely not. And this woman, listen to the voice. I mean, she's so talented. Yeah. She ended up getting a nose job. And then she was voted like the most beautiful woman in Italy, and she ended up like losing her career. I think she sang something fully inebriated on stage at the Met, and then crashed and burned overnight. But it's like uh. so tragic. This is one of my favorite singers, actually, on Amofo. Um, anyway, just incredible, incredible beauty of tone, and yeah. the presentation is so clean and so musical and so yeah. uncompromisingly like colorful. I don't know. I'm, I'm a fan. <laughs> Yeah. She's very smart, economical in certain ways. I love the scoop section on those three lives. We don't have a tenor. <laughs> this must have been a concert. Yeah, they were saving money. <laughs> Is this fast? See, is this fast? No, this is normal, but that phrase she just did sounds like a chicken in most women. She did naturally. Those are perfect. So in tune. Yeah. Oh, Brett. Oh, Lord. 
you're so oh, talented. Oh, she's great. What do you think about the higher extension for sopranos? How would you talk about that in your own words? Well, we just noticed it in Anamofo, like you have to thin through the passaggio, which is pretty much like the top of the treble clef and a little bit above. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have to be gentle and careful in that part in order to bloom above. But then I would say it shifts again for me on a C sharp. The thing that is constant is a very low support. And also what, what has helped me a lot is thinking straight up rather than up at an angle. So oh, I yeah. used to think like, ah, like going up and back, but then I would always crack and stuff. If I just go straight up and straight down, that's very helpful for me oh, to funny, accomplish a high note. I think like a wave crashing over my head so oh. that the sound comes from above in this way. So it's almost, I yeah. think kind of diagonally yeah. that way. See that? And you don't, started this way, but then now you just think like a missile. Or I like think that's what, that's what I mean before yeah. I was doing that sort of crash thing and that I've just now noticed that above the passaggio that doesn't work for me. Mm. I don't know if it's age or something that that quit working for me. Now I have to go straight up at it. But certainly on like a G natural, yeah, before even you an that. A flat, you crest for sure. You go up and over yeah. so that you land on it rather than up through. Because I also generally hate thinking about things as going through the larynx. I'm like, oh, it's just that that makes the larynx go up. That's just a kiss of death. But um, in the, in that case, like singing a high C, it's like cha straight up. And this pours straight down. I'm having so much fun right now. Me too! I really am because I, I, I feel like when I'm around you, I take an espresso shot and I'm just like, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I just, I don't know, we're going a mile a minute right Are now. We? All right, let's okay. listen to the next let's piece because. The next <gasps> there she is, La Divina. This is my rapish. Rapish. I could do this in a concert. Oh, but this is from that late concert. I'm sorry, I know what awaits me. Poor creature. She has a chest voice from like the middle of the treble clef. Hold it up. <laughs> it's just like belting. Tops there. She didn't just that. Well, what about that? I mean, why is she doing that? Oh, I think it's just like trauma, personal life trauma. It screws up your, I mean, that's what I found in my own life. Like when I'm really suffering, it is so much harder to sing. And I think the muscles responsible, so the crico arytenoid muscles Bravo, responsible. Bravo, there you go. Wait, I got a shiny silver dollar for you right here. <laughs> the female voice is comprised predominantly of two sections. You have the head voice and the chest voice. I don't know actually how it works for a minute. I'm really sorry. Is it the same? Uh, it's kind of, uh, I don't want to say on here because I'm going to get a lot. Because falsetto? Uh, yeah. I think well, this is again, you said you don't understand the female voice necessarily. I always feel like that with men. Like, sorry. The way that most women speak is in the chest voice, mm -hmm. but we sing opera predominantly in the head voice. And I like to think of this passaggio as like a subsection of the head voice. So right. like, it's basically beyond the, so what is called the first passaggio in most women, I've heard that a soprano is allowed to sing full chest voice from an E flat and lower, and a mezzo is allowed to sing full chest voice from like an F natural and lower. So actually what determines mezzo or soprano is more the place where the chest voice of necessity switches into the head voice. And it's higher for a mezzo than a soprano. That surprised me when I learned that mm. information. Um, <clears throat> but in this recording, Kalas is singing full chest voice at like an A, like a like a third higher than the mezzo chest limit. And if she, so she's belting, she's just belting sort of. I'm this hearing that she's not speaking. trusting her head voice and carrying down. Well, because right? when she did it eventually, when she sang the head voice and brought it down, it's very thin, it's very covered, it's a little artificial. Yeah. 
Like there was it's something true, going on. The chords weren't. Be, there was no occlusion yeah. in the chords in a, in a real uh, healthy way. It seemed, and uh, I mean, it, but then uh, I think the bottom line is she's able to pressurize the air in her chest voice and in her higher vo head voice to, get full to be occlusion. able to get full occlusion. As soon as she backs off of it to mezzo piano piano, the chords aren't coming together in the way that they uh, that we're yeah. used to hearing from her. No. This is like after a long, long break and she was trying to do a comeback. I mean, this poor woman, her life was so impossible. Can I tell three. you my foot, my leg's falling asleep. Go, 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 yeah. <laughs> we're gonna stretch it out here. Put it oh. your head. I you can. can put your feet. Show the world. No, 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 no. If you listen to like the 1955, La Scala recording of her singing Violetta. This is a woman who figured out how to do literally anything with her voice. She was fortissimo, she was pianissimo, she had any kind of articulation at any pitch level. She was an absolute master of her throat. And then, I don't know, she just went through such difficult life things and quit singing. And I think it, she had so much pressure that she clearly put on herself, but was also heaped upon her by the people around her. And eventually, but can you imagine going from being the utter master of your voice to having to struggle to sing O Mi Babbino Caro? Yeah. Like, what makes Kalas so special? Well, the commitment, right? The commitment. She's so present. And I think all of the hard, grueling labor, excuse me, of developing her technique had happened behind the scenes. So by the time she was performing, she was like a laser beam. She just arrested the attention of every person mm. in the room, just standing still. She didn't have to do jumping jacks. She didn't have to do any craziness. But like I said, I think this was the freedom to act that intense was born of an enormous degree of preparation in advance. I found a lot, a lot of people say, oh, you're just so talented. You just have it, you know? That, that almost cuts me in a way because I think, I worked hard <laughs> to sound like it's that natural. Do you think yeah. that's also something Kalas and maybe even you experience as well? Well, look, I feel like, listen, if I listen to someone like you, a lot of people could work as hard as you worked and would never be able to do what you can do. Mm -hmm. Like, you are the lucky marriage of immense natural talent and devotion to the gift to the point of developing it to this level. So it's obviously a combination of the two. I do think, like, for me, the path was, like, finding the right information from the right people at the right time in order to sort of unlock what I so had you, in me. You, you, you wouldn't say that you were a great singer just naturally? I, like I had so much tension. I had so much tension in the beginning. I struggled a lot. And then I I auditioned for all these choirs. I couldn't get into these choirs. <laughs> they were like, oh, I don't, it's not. I eventually found a teacher who was so kind to me, just personally so kind. And I felt so accepted and welcomed and it sort of unlocked me. I needed someone not to constantly berate me and tell me how lost I was without their mm -hmm. advice mm -hmm. in order to mm -hmm. learn what I had to learn in order to do the thing well. Oh. Oh. <laughs> C'est moi! I didn't know this was going to so good. Stupid aria is so hard to say. <laughs> nice dress. Yeah, this production is pretty baller. Who was this? Covent Garden. Casper Holton. Look, Pavel. Oh, that's so supportive. Hair looks great. <laughs> Look at the crazy eyes. Very important for this area. Very important. Alright. Most people screech that. How the hell do you do that? That's up and Here over. We are. It's under the bus. It's where is it? That's up and over. Yeah, I is hear that. I hear. That. I won't natural? say screech, but I mean, a lot of people don't have the control to do that with a pianissimo. But you feel. don't have a. Ch In my opinion, you don't have a choice because if you just blast it, you mm -hmm. die before the end of the aria. That's the reason you go wrong. I've sir, listen. I've done it that way. <laughs> I've screeched that a lot of times. Through failure comes progress. Yep. Mm -hmm. I do that ornament different now, so it's better for the Italian. Yeah. Un giusto. Look at poor Pablo. He's it's there for you. I know he's I the like best. He's like, throat. just calm down. Just please calm down. And I'm like, F you, I will not. Oh, I'm so sad. 
I'll kill you. <laughs> it's hard watching yourself. I didn't. I didn't know this was coming, but. Is this gonna be? Listen to that. Okay. Okay. Seriously, people don't do that. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, you have to. Yeah, you have to. But, but not everybody can. It's true. I have to. I have to. If I if I just uh, stagnate, then it's death. It's too long. Yeah, but I I'm I don't totally with you. I interrupt it with the breath. I'm, I really I, have to. I think you're absolutely well, not even the breath, but the fact that you start at mezzo piano and then, uh, and then intensify the air to yeah. make the crescendo. Yeah. I mean, I I I I I actually love doing that too. I think it's great. That it if makes you it improves your longevity in a phrase. Certainly. Yeah, but it's artistic. It's beautiful. All right and. All right, you have some very interesting ornaments here that I think are very unique, but also true to Mozart and what I think he would want. It's like, it's an artistic decision. I don't know decision. why they let me get away it's with that, but now I gotta do it every single time. Because people are like, oh, remember when you Is did that the one? D? So you pressure. dug a hole? <laughs> you dug a hole you I, can't get out of with your yep. ornaments. And now people are too afraid of you to say anything because you're a famous diva. So, no, yeah. James Conlon, this this gig was like, don't do that. And then I was like, yeah. well, it's kind of my trademark. I fought for it, but then, uh, anyway, very funny. Did anyway. you win? Yeah, I did, yeah. He let me do it. He let me. He let me do it. Just yeah. the one. Just the D. Oh, the other hurts. ones. It's funny. I'm only apprehensive about the D because in this production, which is the first time I did it, Amy Lane remounted this revival of Casper Holton's Don Giovanni at Covent Garden, and she said, "I'm Team D all the way." I remember her saying that. Look, I'm Team D. <laughs> do the D. And do the, the D. Oh, that's. <laughs> Dude, I wasn't, I wasn't gonna go there, but. <laughs> Mark. Uh, I mean, Kofsky, the conductor, was like very open to ornamentation and like he's very kind of out there. And I remember mm -hmm. him saying insane things when we were rehearsing, like um, in the Zitz program, I remember him asking me to do No Me Dir a little bit more like Celine Dion. Yeah. <laughs> so he, he's like very imaginative, creative person and he was totally into it. So he said, yeah, do the D. Do that D and so we're here, I'm but we're still about on to hear Celine it. Dion. Anyway, I know I don't know what he meant. I never it was never clear to me. But, no, but I love him. I love Mark Bukowski. No, that's just conductor. Aaron Neville. Okay, let's listen. <laughs> here it comes. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Nice double S. Always sending that beautiful sound out. The vibrato never stops. Yep. One and only. Brava. Is that easy for you? No! 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 Thank, no. No. It is so hard. It's like holding back wild horses all the time. I think on the last page, I pretty much am like, I'm tired, and I sort of let them go a little bit. Yeah, yeah. There's so much. It's like a straight jacket. And it's funny, that I would say, that video, particularly of all the like content I have ever been involved in, that would be the most like viral on, I think on Facebook. Anyway, it had like over 100,000 views on Facebook. Weird. I understand <laughs> why everyone would want to listen to that. That was the first time that I did that ornament with a D that yeah. now people think I'm going to always do and so I have to always do it Pressure. if I do badly. <laughs> Can I tell you what I think of when I hear that? Yes. I think that you are someone who has such extreme control of your sound because you're not letting it out at just forte the whole time, all night. Maybe that's all control is. You know? That's funny you say that. Maybe yeah. you're right. It, it feels very, uh, it feels like you've sung it over a thousand times. It feels like you know what to expect, you know what's coming, and you know where you can give and where you need to take. Isn't that so much of singing opera in this career? Is yeah. like, like where, tricks. <laughs> it's where like, are the well, this is really hard. So let me think of some way to not do what's actually there. Let me modify that so it fits my voice. And so yeah. I'm always playing to my strengths. That's, I do a so lot of that. That's clever. Clever. What's like working I, for you? I so. barely sing, like, unvoiced consonants when I'm singing high. I'm just like... Ah, la, la, la. I mean, in my opinion, when, like, look, diction up high. Because no one cares what you're Careful. saying if you say it beautifully. <laughs> do you yes. know what I mean? Up high. I think in the... And yeah. very often, composers... I mean, there are exceptions, obviously, but... Very often, composers will have you repeat text up high that you said down low. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, I'll really articulate it when it's low. Yeah. But when we go up, I just got to do what I got to do. Exactly. You know? Thank you. Thank you for that little narcissism adventure. This was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <sorry>. Sucked. <laughs> he slapped me. Oh! Yeah. But it was, it was a stage slap. <laughs> it was safe. It was, I did the pat. We were very yeah. successful. I'll never forget it. I'll always be there for you. Thanks, Lucas.